there's a ton of noise out there. So how do you get decision makers to pay attention to your brand? Start a podcast and invite your ideal clients to be guests on your show. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. We're here today with Maria Pergolino, CMO at Anaplan. Maria, how are you doing today? I'm so happy to be here. Nice to talk to you, Logan. It is great to connect. Really excited to hear from you today. I know you're going to have uh, some great topics to share with our audience. For folks that that don't know you, you have a, a great career with some big names in the marketing space. So a lot of folks probably know your name, but I would love for you to give our audience a, a brief background on um, what you and the team at Anaplan are up to these days. Yeah. So just uh, first, a little bit about myself. I know everybody heard. I'm Maria Pergolino. I am a B2B marketer, a passionate B2B marketer uh, who... <laughs> work with software technology, and I love to be uh, with growing companies where marketing really has a huge voice. So a shout out to all the other B2B marketers on the call. The company I work for is Anaplan, and it is pioneering the category of connected planning, which essentially, if you're thinking, well, I'm in marketing, do I really need connected planning? Uh, every part of the business does. It's all about decision making, right? Anytime you're mm-hmm. making a decision, there's some plan that goes into that decision, whether it's which pack of gum do I want to buy or which company do we purchase, right? They're all decisions. <laughs> they all need plans tied to them. Uh, and so it is a cloud uh, company. It is software, but really it is what powers some of the largest companies in the world, how they're making decisions. And I think that's something that. Mm -hmm. Uh, every marketer thinks about when they're forecasting, budgeting, deciding what the plan's going to be. It's part of why we all love marketing. It's that strategy of the organization. Mm -hmm. I love that analogy, whether what company you're going to buy or what stick of gum you're going to pick at at checkout. (laughs) You're right. It's all decisions, right? It's all, it's all uh, a plan coming to life. And so Mm -hmm. it is very, you know, when I worked for a company that many of the marketers on the call know, Marketo, it was mm-hmm. amazing because it was marketing to marketers, a market, or marketing technology. Anaplan is a technology for every part of the business. So I do get to market to marketers again, but in this bigger sense of, mm-hmm. you know, how do we help uh, every part of the business with how they're going to make decisions, which, um, which is just so fun to do. It's, mm-hmm. uh, we have lots of jobs open. I hope lots of marketers, uh, the best, come in and join me in this great category creation. Yeah, I love it. Well, we definitely have a lot of folks in the audience that are that are B2B marketers. So I'm sure your shout out there was was well received and we'll make sure folks know how to connect with you at, at the end of the call. I love that, Maria. Well, we're going to jump right into today's topic, Maria, of how to make your company a company of marketers. And I know you've, um, you've spoken on this topic before. You've got some passion here. So why don't we open it up with why would we do this? What would be the benefits of, of someone wanting to take this approach of making their entire team, you know, a company of marketers? Yeah. Can I, um, can I start off with a little story about this? Is that, is that okay? I love that. We love stories here. <laughs> Perfect. So imagine, uh, you know, six months ago, i just started with the organization with Anna Plan, and I have to uh, stand in front of this sales team at our annual kickoff and address them for the first time as the CMO. I've only been with the company for a short time. Mm -hmm. I I have essentially less than 10 minutes to address the group and they want to hear 
about what's going to be different, what's marketing going to do, not only for the year, but now that there's a new CMO. And so now I'm putting together this presentation. And when I thought about what's different or what has to change, the reality is I was joining an amazing marketing team with a great plan and program. And it was, there's definitely some reimagining to things that we could do, but for me to get the most benefit out of the marketing of the company, it was not to go tell one of the marketers on the team how to do their job different. Any CMO that's trying to win by out-marketing somebody who's already a marketer on their team, it's it's a really hard way to get big gains. Uh, (laughs) Instead, I realized that the goal was not to drastically change the marketing team, but to really change who was doing the marketing by getting more marketers. And uh, mm. obviously, first thought was, hey, well, will the CEO give me a thousand marketers? But, but that was highly unlikely, right? <laughs> and so how do sure. I turn all thousand people in the company into marketers? And actually, way mm-hmm. beyond that, how do we then take the entire ecosystem, all of those customers, all of the partners, all of the influencers, all the press, how are we going to get them to tell our story? Because winning wasn't, again, me telling a marketer how to do their job a little bit better. It was going to be how do we get all of these different stakeholders in the organization really sharing the uh, the amazing benefits of Ataplan and, and our connected mm-hmm. planning solution. Right. Sounds like a much more strategic play and something that you could you could make a lot further strides in quickly as you were coming on because you came on to the the Anaplan team in in your current role, you know, about the end of last year and and you were kind of facing facing that, you know, in that time frame, right? Yeah, so it's and the other thing is think about when you're standing on a stage, what do people want to listen to? Do they want to hear <laughs> you talk about your vision, whether it be mm-hmm. for five minutes or five hours, or do they want to hear how they can help, how they can ideate, how they can yeah. share, how they can contribute? And so that's really been a lot of uh, how I've spent my last six months, obviously working with the team, but encouraging them to leverage the other thousand people in the organization, the you know thousands of people that that participate in our partner community. The, all of the people at the 850 plus customers that we have, you know, how do we get all of them to have a voice? And I think if marketers thought about, and especially CMOs thought about that as their, their challenge more, one, it would free up the marketing team to do more of the marketing that they were excited about. And it would really make, I mean, that feels like a big job, right? That is exciting. That is, um, that's the job I want to go to every day is the one where, we're, we're, we're turning a, a marketing team that, you know, is sub a hundred people into really thinking of it as a marketing job of leading thousands, mm-hmm. tens right, of thousands. Right. So you're building some momentum, you're building some excitement within your own marketing team and throughout the organization by kind of casting this vision of how they can they can all participate. And so I think, you know, a lot of our audience, Maria, can, can totally buy into that and, and get excited about this idea, you know, if they're wanting to take those next steps, you know, what are some things that, that you recommend or, or that you've done with the team at Anaplan to start doing that? Yeah, I think it comes from first a cultural piece. And fortunately, I, am, I have an amazing uh, CEO as a partner to help mm-hmm. with that here. In fact, Frank Calderoni, who uh, is our CEO, has brought an amazing culture to the team. We uh, leverage a number of different tools uh, one of those is called reality-based leadership. Somebody leads that name, Cy Wakeman. And she really talks about you know, how to ask these great questions to you know, have people achieve to their potential, right? Instead mm-hmm. of let's get in a room and complain about all the things that aren't working. How do we say, how do we make this great? How do we get this to working? And then empowering each other to get there. Um, mm-hmm. And so what we did is we changed some of the questions. Instead of saying, you know, how do we do this on our own, the people that are in the room? How do we look to the the other uh, people in the ecosystem, in the company to help achieve our goals? And so one mm-hmm. simple example of that, and this does start with like, here's my shout out to planning, right? Coming, you, this does not happen <laughs> accidentally. You have to have a plan. Right. Um, you have to have, actually, you have to have a strategy which ties to a plan. And then Mm -hmm. to that plan, you have to have great execution, right? The amazing Mm -hmm. thing about being in marketing is it is so strategic. 
But the thing that differentiates good marketing from mediocre or bad marketing is then is not actually in the strategy, but it's can you execute on that strategy and can you do it in a great and differentiated way? Mm-hmm. And so a huge shout out to planning, which we think about as, as a connected planning company, but also then to those execution points. Uh, and just a, one simple example, right? Anna, who is an amazing marketer on our team, who owns our partner marketing, didn't just say, how do I give the, the partner team materials? How do I do some joint partner events? She, mm-hmm. she said, you know, how do we really create a community where we can enable the partners to create joint marketing materials, to go speak on our behalf, to go do the events where they're leveraging our brand, where we don't even have to be in the room. And that's a really mm-hmm. bold way to think about your marketing, right? How do you hand it to somebody else? to go mm-hmm. do great things with it? How do you empower those, uh, not, not just in the marketing department, but in the alliance team internally and then the partners externally? And the team was excited. They, they definitely rose to that challenge. I'm seeing amazing uh, work every single day, but it is in that you have to start by thinking about it differently and making those goals probably bigger than what you uh, originally mm-hmm. planned. Today's growth story is all about search engine marketing. The company we're highlighting is Sentinel One. This challenger cybersecurity brand was set out to disrupt the endpoint protection space. Their brand was top notch, their product was innovative, but they were struggling to gain traction online in an already developed industry. Then they found Directive Consulting, a B2B search marketing agency. Within the first quarter of working with Directive, Sentinel One was able to increase their organic traffic by 128%, and overall lead volume by an outstanding 251%. Now I have a hunch that Directive can get these kind of results for you too. So head over to directiveconsulting.com and request a totally free custom proposal. That's directiveconsulting.com. All right, let's get back to this interview. There are some other things that you guys are doing with with other departments specifically where you've seen some good results in having them, you know, take the the banner of marketing, take the message, you know, beyond marketing's walls with, you know, HR or sales or other departments, you know, a, as you've kind of touched on broadly, it, it, there's some other examples in specific departments where you guys have seen examples of this as well, Maria? Yeah, I think two other things, examples worth noting. So one, on our customer success team, there's Mm -hmm. an amazing group that works on customer experience. They actually won uh, an an award from Serious Decisions this last year on their customer experience. And this team, they spend so much time understanding our customers and their insights and what's important to them. Uh, When we thought about, and this is something that you don't think about how do you leverage across the company, but, but things like GDPR and and our subscription center, right? How, who signs up for mm-hmm. what emails? That sounds mm-hmm. very marketing, right? That sounds like operations. Somebody does that alone in a room, maybe legal checks it out at the end and you, you cross it off. But mm-hmm. instead we turned it into a project where the customer experience team went out and talked to our customers, found out what they wanted to opt into, what they didn't want to opt into, what mm-hmm. should we have as different uh, types of communication, we brought it into a project that was far beyond marketing, something that sounds like it should be happening in a room in a, you know, a broom closet, like mm-hmm. <laughs> as an isolated thing, where we turned it yeah. into something that could create more customer value. Now, the reality is it still is a subscription center. That is something that is still, you know, you think of something that, that sits on a, a landing page and, and how do you rally the company around that? But because that team helped work on it, they're now every time our CS team is talking to our customers, they're now saying, hey, what type of material do you want to see? There's awareness about the different channels that we have for our customers that people didn't even know about internally. We have other teams Mm -hmm. talking about things like newsletters and community that they weren't even aware existed because we opened up the project to a bigger group. Mm -hmm. I think another example is tied to customer marketing, really thinking about, I'm drawing kind of a new org chart right now that instead of being that typical hierarchy that really puts customer marketing in the center of our marketing, Mm -hmm. how do we get all, everybody in the company, if really to understand the customer marketing, the voice of our customers, what is going to be the center of our marketing and how do we get everybody excited to share those customer stories because they know that's going to be the, the part that marketing highlights the most. 
and then <laughs> take the challenge back now that they're so involved because they're sharing those customer stories, challenging the team to now, as we put together programs that highlight different customers as we have new assets, to really share them out. And so it is, mm-hmm. I think the first thing when we think about building a company of marketers, the first thing we think about is let's get them social sharing, let's get the team posting on extra. And I think that's great, but to make them part of the, them being the entire company, part of what's shared in, they're going to be more excited to share that out. Uh, One final example, Mm -hmm. starting with, you know, what does that social media policy and speaker policy look like? I see so many that are closed in an organization. Don't do this, don't do that. They don't talk about how to empower people. You know, we want you to go be a great speaker. These are the places we need your help. This is what we want you to share. Mm -hmm. Similar in social media, how do we enable people instead of having them concerned over what's going to get them in trouble? I think all of those are ways (laughs) to create a company of marketers. And then just asking, right? Like everybody, it's the the best and the worst part about marketing is that everybody has an opinion on it, right? It's... um, it's something tangible. It's the, it's some, it's the external piece of our organization. And so people see it, they have ideas instead of every time. um, The worst thing I ever heard, I mean, I've I've been to so many conferences, so many events. And the worst thing I ever heard at a conference was a CMO. um, And I'm definitely not naming names, but they said, (laughs) you know, my real job is to be the CMO because so many people come with ideas and there's just too much noise and mm-hmm. that cannot be the approach. You have to be the CM, yes, right? Like the, you want to capture <laughs> all of those different ideas because if people feel like their ideas are a part of the marketing, they're going to go out and share them. They're going to go out and advocate. So, you know, you can't obviously do everything. So when somebody comes with an idea, asking them, hey, what's the goal around that? Hey, if we did this alternative thing, would you also mm-hmm. support it? You know, yep. so it's building a partnership with each of those different teams, I think is, so yeah. important and not having not um, back to what I was talking about with that reality based leadership. One of the big things in there mm-hmm. is not coming at it with an ego, right? Mm-hmm. Just because I have an idea doesn't mean that your idea can't work too. Right. Uh, and I think right. all of that really critical in the success of marketing. Right. Well, I think, you know, the common theme there is, is building a two way street. As you mentioned, Maria, you want to bring them in, bring other departments into projects that you're doing so that they can feel like a part of it and, and kind of flipping the script on, you know, their involvement with marketing as opposed to setting up, okay, these, these are the guidelines that you have. Don't go beyond them or you're going to get in trouble. Flip the script of, okay, there are still some guidelines, but here are all the things that you could do. Here are all the things that, that, you know, you could partner with marketing on in ways to go about it, you know, bring us your ideas. Um, I love that idea of a CM. Yes, that is, that is phenomenal. Well, Maria, I, I love the ideas you've been sharing here. I think there are some definitely uh, practical takeaways that people can learn from from your examples and what you're doing at Anaplan. If people want to reach out to you, stay connected with you, um, what's the best way for them to go about doing that? Yeah, you can definitely find me on Twitter at Inbound Marketer, uh, similar on Instagram and I believe Facebook and LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. It's Maria Pergolino. You can always reach me here at Anaplan, either through one of our social channels or through uh, my email address, which is just my first name, dot last name at Anaplan.com and happy to connect with anyone, especially if you have ideas or, it, you know, I'd love to hear other ideas on how people are enabling their uh, organizations with marketing. I also think that I may be seeing some of your listeners at the upcoming Mm -hmm. Flip My Funnel conference, which I am so excited about. (laughs) <laughs> and it, just give us a little preface to to what you're going to be doing, because not just a, a normal you know talk or something. There is going to be a game show piece of the conference that you're going to be involved with, right? Yeah. So I think that your listeners could probably tell that I am, I definitely have strong opinions. So I think I'm in the perfect <laughs> session uh, at Flip My Funnel. We are doing. Um, a flip my funnel family feud, an account based marketing family feud, and mm-hmm. this is filled with, I mean, John Barrows, Chris Bertuzzi, Justin Gray from Lead MD, Matt Hines uh, from Hines mm-hmm. Marketing, all people yep. that are a part of this family feud. So this is like uh, I'm like starstruck with the people that I get to join um, <laughs> on this panel. So yeah. I'm I'm very excited. Our, our family feud, this game show. Uh, I think it's going to be a Mm -hmm. lot of fun. What is interesting about almost every person uh, 
in this session is strong opinions. I think it's going to be a really funny yep. and exciting uh, time. So I hope everybody yeah. comes and joins the conversation by stopping by at this uh, ABM conference because uh, it's going to be a really, yeah. really, I think, great networking time as well as just uh, mm -hmm. I know how much time the team is spending on the content. It's going to be really amazing. Yeah. Here at B2B Growth, we are uh, big fans of Flip My Funnel and the the 2018 conference. There are going to be a ton of great speakers. Uh, and this Family Feud event is something that I've had in mind since, since I knew that I would be uh, going in a uh, few uh, the other members of our team, you know, like you mentioned, a lot of names and it sounds like this piece is going to be a lot of fun. So if for nothing else, come to tune in to this awesome game show, ABM Family Feud at, at Flip My Funnel. For B2B growth listeners, whether you're uh, going to already going to Flip My Funnel or we've just piqued your interest with uh, the Family Feud event that Maria is going to be uh, a part of there, um, we have a promo code for you guys. B to B growth. That's B the number two B growth, just like the show name. Uh, if you go to flipmyfunnel.com, go to the 2018 conference link. When you go to get your tickets, use that promo code B to B growth. You'll get 50% off your tickets and um, look forward to seeing you guys there and tuning in to a great game show. Maria, thanks so much. It's been great having you. Thank you so much. And that's such a 50% off. That's such a good code. I look forward to seeing everybody there. <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much, Logan. There are lots of ways to build a community, and we've chosen to build the B2B growth community through this podcast. But because of the way podcasts work, it's really hard to engage with our listeners. And without engagement, it's tough to build a great community. So here's what we've decided to do. We're organizing small dinners across the country with our listeners and guests. No sales pitches, no agenda, just great conversations with like-minded people. We'll talk business. We'll talk family. We'll talk goals and dreams. We'll build friendships. So if you'd like to be a part of a B2B growth dinner in a city near you, go to b2bgrowthdinners.com. That's b2bgrowthdinners.com. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.